Hello friends, this is Nareen Maurya and today I'm gonna build a something amazing from scratch. So let's get started without further delay. And today the, the project today which we are gonna touch is a Node Express GraphQL application with Apollo Express server. And we'll be creating an no authentication application in that. So currently I'm in my development folder and it's com completely like a, with a couple of projects in there. So I'm gonna create a new project here. So for that, I'm gonna simply write mkdir express gql and cd express gql so this will create a new folder in the directory and i also i also got into that directory and this directory is completely empty i have i haven't written any single code in that so you can see that directory is completely empty so now i'm going to start with a new project so for that I have to, I want you to install this if you haven't installed. So you can simply go here, download Node.js and install your system if it is not there. And you can go for the 12.6, 1.6.3 LTS version, or you can even go for the latest features. So I prefer this 12 version. And once you are done with the installation, I want you to go install this Visual Studio code. So you can download and install this Visual Studio code in your system. And this is an elegant software by Microsoft, which is very smooth and handy for the development and makes comes up with a ton of features in that. And I have a lot of plugins in it. So you can use them and that will be very easy for you. And the last application which I want you to install is a MongoDB Compass. So MongoDB Compass and you can download it from here so just to navigate to the database and if you don't have you can also use the terminal way to uh, browse the database and the mongodb so you can go and download this mongo's mongo compass from the site and you can go ahead and see whatever you want and you can download and install this in your system this will be simply very uh, like you can use it anyway so that will be good for you. So once you are done installing with these things, what well, last application, last but not least application, which I want you to install is the Postman. I will show both the ways how you can call your GraphQL API using Postman also, as well as I will be working mainly with the playground, which this Apollo server comes up. So for learning more about the Apollo Express server, you can simply say Apollo Express server, and you can go ahead and learn more about this thing. And the, one of the best features which I liked about it is it's statically typed that means like whatever we want we have to define the types of that so for more about that you can learn over here and you can go ahead and do a lot of stuff this will be a very basic tutorial and we'll be creating an authentication application with the jwt tokens and the bonus part of this application will be we'll be using refresh token mechanism so which will be very helpful for you guys to learn about that and moreover i will be um, i'll try to touch one more advanced concept if i have a time it's gonna be a kind of long video series and i ha i want you to guys to be bear with me and especially this first video because uh core of the heavy lifting we'll be doing in in this application will be here so don't worry about guys just bear with me and focus on learning let's get started if i ls this is currently empty directory and there's nothing inside so i want to i want you to create no node project in that and for that if you have already installed this node.js you can simply check that version node dash dash version and you can see currently it is i'm using currently 13.11.0 and if I want to check NPM version, so I can simply say NPM dash dash version. It, this is currently I'm running 6.1.4. That's how I'm going to start. And to create a new project, we can simply say NPM in a dash Y and which will come up with the default packet.json file. And if I LS, you can see now I have the packet.json file created over here. If you want to check the content of this packet.json, I can simply say package and you can see this is the content in the packet.json which uh, in which nothing it's all the default configuration inside so we are not going to touch anything so that's for now and i'm going to quickly quit that and if i ls you can see there's nothing inside so i'm going to install a couple of dependencies which we will be using in our application so first dependency which i'm going to use is by saying npm install express apollo server express bcrypt to hash the password uh, bcrypt.js mongoose 
and then we are also going to use one more package and that's ESM and this ESM package if you want to learn more about this ESM package I can simply go to this documentation over here so which is over here npm.js and if you want to learn more about this package you can learn a lot about this but I will give you the idea what it does it does basically under the hood it will you can write ES6 syntax in your in your Node Express project under the hood it will be running and compiling your project in ES5 module so in that way you will have a liberty to use import statement and a lot of other things and even export default statements so you can use that I'm gonna simply type and check about this package and you can check it over here so ESM and you can see this package and this really gave me a lot of freedom to learn about this thing and that's very good enough for me you can use this package and in order to run your code in import statement so the last but not the least package which i'm going to use is happy js so let's quickly explore about this package what it does and so happy joy and this is very interesting package because it gives a lot of validation stuffs for us and we don't have to worry about even and you can learn more about this from this page so I can simply explore and go through this page and how we can use a lot of validation stuff using copy JS validation of the data on the client uh, front end, uh, on the back end side. So I personally love this package and if you are using node express package so it's simply node express so you can even go with the express validator but I really love this happy JS. So I think that's it and express apollo server express we have bcrypt.js mongodb mongoose esm and that's for yeah one more package which i like is consoler and this is really amazing package uh, for the feedbacks so i can simply go and show just and this was the package created by nuxjs team so i really love this package because it gives a lot of good feedbacks like we can use badges and a lot of other stuff so you can simply check about this consoler package over here so I'm gonna search for that and I can show you how it works so this is consola package and you can see an input and you can see a lot of like it looks it gives a lot of good things so you can use that way in your system and that's how it works so it is really an amazing package and you can learn about that so learn about that once we are done with this and let's give some time to install it this might take just a moment uh, once it is done we'll be back so it didn't took me much to install these packages but once these packages are done and installed so if I ls and if I go to and you can see node modules folders have been created where it, where it is keeping all the project dependencies which we just added to our project and we also see uh, there's a packet dot packet log json file is also created which locks all the package and all the interdependencies of those packages which we just installed so if i go vim package.json and you can see all these packages have been installed in the dependencies so now we have everything set up just ready to go with our application to open this project in visual studio code you can use code period and you can see this package is, uh, this folder is now open in Visual Studio Code. All these packages have been installed and you can see here we have nice elegant package. Log JSON file is also created and we can also see package slash JSON. So before proceeding with anything else, I want you to add a couple of more scripts. So first will be the start script, which will be starting our, which will start our application. And it will be simply say node env equal to production and node r dash r esm and period and then there was the dev development script and um, for that i can simply say eval dollar cat we have to concatenate that env file so where we have then node mon so this node mon i will come to this part in a moment and this will be our development script so once we are done with this thing now i'm gonna create a new file called env where we, gonna, we are gonna store all our environment variables so first environment variable which will be app port and which will be 4000 in my case generally i prefer 4000 for my graphql applications then node 
A and B development development yeah then will be app secret and you can type any random secret here I'm gonna type in I'm typing my super secret then app refresh secret secret and last but not the least mongoose uh, mongodb slash localhost and this will be the directory of the data 27017 database and gql app so this will be the database which we are gonna use and you can use even the atlas clusters also on this string you just have to provide that string over here but i'm using my local which is currently i'm running in docker so i can simply say docker ps a so you can see this uh, my mongodb is running over here on port 27017 you can even install local instance of mongodb but i prefer docker way so i'm using that docker instance so once we are done with this uh, we are not having anything else and even if you want to create your mongodb instance you can simply write this command so the command will be simply docker container run or even you can simply write run not run sorry dash d which will run in the, the attached mode 27017 and which will be mapping 27017 port of mongodb instance dash dash name mongo mongo so this command will simply pull your image from the mongodb which is available on the docker hub so i will see hub dot docker and you can find this image over here it will automatically but make sure you have already installed docker in your system for that so this uh, sorry about that but i can simply show you here mongo so this will simply run and pull that image from the docker and this is the official mongodb package but you have to simply you have to first install that i already did that part so i'm not going to rewrite that but you can rewrite that command again so once we are done with this setting up the docker and even installing with the mongodb you can simply use that url and that will be working just fine so before starting with the project i want you to create another file which will be our entry point so index.js and this will be our index.js so remember in my previous videos i have already always used x uh, const require statements so in this project we are not going to write those pro write those things so i'm going to simply import src and now you say there will be there's no src folder so how from where it is going to import so for that i will simply say src and in this this will be the root of the project where our whole project will be living so inside that src i'm going to simply write and let me quickly increase the size index.js i'm going to create this will be our entry point of our application and this will simply pull in that index.js from as our src directory so so that we don't have to do much heavy lifting and before writing anything in inside our index.js let's create a couple of things so first folder which i'm going to create is models second project a uh, second folder i'm going to create is config third folder i'm going to create is uh, simply we can simply say graph ql and in this hour i'm going to create two more folders one will be type depths and another will be resolvers resolvers and third folder which i'm going to create will be our validators so in this i'm going to create new folder validators so these are three folders which we have just created and we don't have to worry about these folders for now so before proceeding with anything else i'm also going to create another folder in this src that will be our our functions and in this function i'm going to create another folder called auth so this is a modular structure which i follow in my all of our applications so this is one of way or even you can get rid of this function folders and I'm, I'm gonna create a new folder inside that 
that simply will be auth functions which will contain our authentication function inside that so once we are done with that i'm going to create index.js file in each of them index.js uh, it's not about not ks it will be simply js and this is currently empty so i'm going to quickly copy this folder copy this file and i'm going to paste in our type definitions and also i'm going to paste in our resolvers so basically what it is it is going to do is simply will be will it will be providing the entry point uh, for uh, each of the folders so we don't have to worry about that for now uh, we'll come back to this part later so now in our index.js in our src or the root of the project uh, we are going to bring in a couple of dependencies so first of all we'll be bringing import express from express and i don't know yeah that's fine then import from apollo server express we'll be bringing this apollo server then we also we also will be bringing our mongoose package from mongoose and i really like to align everything it's consola from consola so we have brought on all these packages now i'm gonna simply bring in import uh, not import type definitions type depths from graphql folder and also gonna bring in from type depths and this will be resolvers so these will be the resolvers so i'll come back to this part what are resolvers and how these type definitions work we'll come back to those things later so for now it's very important for us to uh, configure our project before starting with our application so as you can see i have created config folder and i'm going to create a new file in that index.js and this file will be our bootstrapping file where we'll pull in our configurations of the application and then we will bring in in our index.js to the entry point and we'll provide our express server with those configurations so that it can perform properly so we are gonna export const and firstly whatever we are pulling in from our in configuration environment we are exporting everything from here app port then we have node env which will be simply our node environment then app secret and last but not the least what was the configuration app refresh secret so wherever we will require we will simply pull in from this file so and one more variable which we, know, which we are going to export in prod equal to node env equal to equal to production so production and currently you can see it's in our development environment so it will simply be it will be simply false so it will be exporting false from here so that's it for our, our configuration and uh, we are not going to need this configuration full file anywhere but for now we are going to import a couple of things from our config and first we are going to use db in prod then we'll be bringing in app port so these are the three things which we need for now and i think yeah that's for now and one more thing here we'll start setting up the middlewares but later not right now and i forgot completely since we are going to deal with json web token so there's one more package which we need to install and which just came into my mind so simply we'll simply say npm i json web token and this is basically jwt package which will provide our authentication token mechanism and we can use in 
and also issuing our refresh token so that we can validate our user on the back end and even issue him a new token in case the previous token has been expired so it is a kind of two way two way authentication mechanism so this middleware uh, i'll come back to this middleware because we need to set one middleware which i'll show you while working for now that's fine so now starting apollo express server and before going initialize the application or you can simply say app so we can simply say const app equal to new or not new express we can simply say and then this way we are gonna initialize our new express application and once we are done we are gonna simply initialize server which will be our new apollo server and in this we are gonna pass a couple of configurations first so first configuration which i'm gonna pass is type definitions because since our apollo server is completely like our graphql is completely based on types so this type definitions are gonna simply be providing types to our end our express uh, graphql endpoints so we need to import that and pass it in here then second thing will be resolvers so resolvers are nothing but the our functions which we are going to perform those queries which have been passed from the front end or the client we can simply perform those queries on the back end using and resolve those functions by let's say any kind of query or any kind of mutation on the from the back end then there's one more playground option playground option and we are going to simply say in prod that is in prod otherwise false if that is false otherwise we are gonna simply show our production so we can simply say settings and in that settings we are gonna set couple of things so request dot credentials includes so these are the things so what basically I'm gonna show is like if we are in production, we don't want to we don't want to expose our F Apollo uh, playground. So for that, it is required. We need to do something, and in that in this way, we are simply gonna set up our server. So once these configurations have been passed to our application, and now we need to start our applications. Start application function. So I'm gonna start this application using asynchronous request and we are gonna use with consola package as well as the mongoose now and we also will also be providing our application port as well as our database instance. So I'm gonna create a new function called start app and this will be an asynchronous function because connecting with a database might take some time. And again, I'm gonna, it might be unsuccessful at often times. So for that, I'm gonna use catch try catch block so in this try catch block and to start the server i'm going to simply say start app so this will call this function so await mongoose.connect and i'm going to pass our db constant which we have just provided imported over here and once that database provided and we need to pass in some objects uh, some configurations to our MongoDB. So first configuration which will be use new URL parser and we are going to set it to true. Use unified topology and we are going to set it to true. And that's all for now I guess. Yes, that's all for now. And once that part has been done, we are going to use a consola package so that we can send some kind of uh, feedback to our database or even the logger so we can send consola.success and this will be a success callback message successfully connected with the database and instead of this I'm gonna use backticks and this will be our DB 
LN. So in the new line. And we are also going to provide to some kind of bash feedback. We are going to simply say bash set it to true. So in this way, it will work. Consola. Once that part is done, now we are going to provide, we are going to listen to our application. So app dot listen. And we'll pass in our app port. And once that port has been passed, instead what we can simply say port app port yeah so that port has been passed it will give some kind of callback and in that callback we are going to simply towel call our consola again and since it's it is a single line statement so we don't need any kind of that server so we can simply write that thing server so started even we can say Apollo server started on we can simply say here HTTP local host app port server dot graphql path so this will be our path where it is gonna be starting our application and in case of any error we can simply throw that error and instead of success we can pass that error server and here that message so this will throw that message so this is basically we are start setting up our application and I think we are done with our entry point so in the next video I, I think this video is kind of a long video so in the next video we are gonna start working on our other stuff before running that server and in the next video let's catch up Thank you guys.